product mix and levels of products. This module discusses the role of product line and product mix. We will also examine the importance of criteria like staple merchandise, fashion merchandise, seasonal merchandise and fad merchandise in assortments. You will also discover the significance of different levels of product and service. Finally, you will also gain an insight into the exciting world of luxury products and learn the principles of luxury product management. Having understood the definitions of product, service, brand and importance of packaging, then studying the types of products that are available for an apparel marketers, it is the time to understand how the marketers arrange the products as a boutique and offer to the consumer. This is what we are going to study in module 3 as part of product mix and levels of products. Now let us understand the first element of the product mix that is product line. Product line is a broad group of products intended for essentially similar uses and having similar physical characteristics. The product line constitutes a group of products that are closely related because they function in a similar manner are sold to the same customer groups are marketed through same type of outlets or fall within similar price ranges. For example, Puma produces athletic and casual footwear and sportswear. The major product line decisions involves product line length that is the number of items in the product line. The length of the product line is vital in the decision making in terms of profitability. In offering a product line, firms usually develop a basic platform and modules that can be added to meet different customer requirements. The managers need to consistently review the performance of their product line to evaluate the contribution of each product item to the line's overall performance. Product line length is influenced by company goals, expansion plans, resources and customer requirements. For example, Gap runs several clothing store chains. That is Gap, Old Navy and Banana Republic store chains are there covering different 
price points. Now let us come to the product mix. The product mix also known as product assortment refers to the total number of product lines that a company offers to its customers. For example, a small company may sell multiple lines of products. Sometimes these product lines are fairly similar such as dish washing liquid and bar soap which are used for cleaning and use similar technologies. Other times the product lines are vastly different such as diapers and razors. Four dimensions to a company product mix include width, length, depth and consistency. The width of a company's product line <coughs> pertains to the number of product lines that a company sells. For example, if a company has two product lines, its product mix width is 2. The small and upstart businesses will usually not have a wide product mix. It is more practical to start with some basic products and build market share. Later on, a company's technology may allow the company to diversify into other industries and build the width of the product mix. Now the product line length. The product line length shows the number of different products in a product line. A long product line has lots of different products in it and a short product line has smaller number of products in it. The product manager's job is to work out how many products to include in the product line. If there are too many product types in a product line, they will begin to compete with each other. Increase costs and unnecessarily and even can confuse customs. If the product line is too short, it will limit customer choice and send customers to competitors with a great selection of products. The product line depth. Now, what is product line depth? Some of the product types in a product line may be split again into groups. The product line depth shows how many subgroups of product line contains. For example, Samsung have split their mobile phones into the following product line, touch screens, slider folders, QWERTY keyboards and bar phones. Each of these product lines can be further split into subgroups at the time of writing this article. Samsung had 7 slider mobile phones and 32 touch screen mobile phones. So, 32 is a deep product line. Product line stretching. The product line stretching occurs when a business adds new product to the product line and the new product types are of a higher or lower quality 
than existing products in the product line. If the new product types are cheaper or of a lower quality, it is known as a downward stretch. If the new product types are more expensive or of a higher quality, it is known as an upward stretch. Supermarkets often stretch product lines by offering value, standard and premium versions of their own brand products. The product stretching enables firms to fill any gaps they have identified in the market. So, what is a product mix? A product mix which is also called product assortment is the set of all products offered for sale by a company. So, a product mix decision or product portfolio consists of all the product lines and items that a particular seller offers for sale. The structure of a product mix as we have seen has both breadth and depth. Its breadth is measured as we have seen by the number of product lines carried and its depth by the variety of sizes, colors and models offered within each product line. The product range for each of the above products for men's, women's and kids would make the mix look good if it has all garment types and subcategories available, the mix looks good. For example, if we look at men's shirt category, we have formal shirts, we have casual shirts for which the following illustration gives clarity. If we look at the chart, we have the product mix of formal shirts and casual shirts. The chart further says in terms of formal shirts, if we look at the mix, the formal shirts has plain colors, stripes, patterns, prints, dress and evening. So, in terms of depth, we can consider long sleeve, short sleeves, all sizes and colors. These are the parameters of depth. So, the formal shirts in terms of plain colors, it has long sleeves, short sleeves and it is available in all colors and all colors and all sizes. So, here the length is considered to be very good and its depth also is very good. When it comes to stripes and when it comes to depth, even striped formal shirts are available in long sleeve, short sleeve, all sizes, all color types. Hence, even here the depth is considered to be good. So, when it comes to patterns, the pattern formal shirt has long sleeve, short sleeve and it is available in all sizes, but the colors is limited to one. Then when it comes to prints, the print shirts are available in long sleeve, short sleeve, all sizes, but again in terms of colors, it is available only in one type. Then again, the dress or evening shirts are considered in terms of long sleeve and they are available in 
all sizes. They are not available in short sleeve and different types of collars are also not available. That is how we would analyze the product mix of a particular formal shirt. If we look at the second table which is for casual shirts, the polo shirt is available in long sleeve only, they do not have short sleeve. When it comes to t-shirts again this particular product mix is available only in long sleeve, whereas the plain casual shirts are available in both long sleeve and short sleeve. When it comes to striped casual shirts again they are available in long sleeves and short sleeve. When it comes to pattern casual shirts they are available in long sleeve and short sleeve. When it comes to printed casual shirts they are also available in long sleeve and short sleeve. So, this is how when we analyze the product mix there are some products where the length is very good and the depth is also very good. When it comes to certain products the length may be good, but the depth is not there in that particular product. So, this is how we have to analyze the product mix of a particular brand or a particular retailer or a manufacturer. When it comes to the product mix practically in apparel, it consists of items in the assortments grouped by criteria like staple merchandise. What is staple merchandise? It consists of those products that are carried permanently by the retailer and that have relatively stable sales over time. For example, jeans, white shirt, t-shirt, etc. Any season, any store must have these products in their product mix. Then the next product item that must be there in the assortment is fashion merchandise. Products that have cyclical sales because of changing tastes and lifestyles is what is called as fashion products. The color, the occasions, cuts of clothing, the products change year after year and hence they are fashion products which change according to the seasons. Then the seasonal merchandise, as we know apparel or fashion business is seasonal. Certain merchandise change as per the season that is spring, summer, autumn, winter. Hence, it consists of products that do not sell equally well over consecutive time periods like sweaters will be available during winter, the rain wear during the rainy season. Then there is a merchandise which will be there as part of the product portfolio of many fashion companies that is fad merchandise. It generates very high sales for a short time period. Example, movie merchandise like Harry Potter, Spider-Man, etc. As long as the movie is popular or running, the merchandise will be in vogue. Once the movie goes, a new movie comes or a new trend comes, the old trend vanishes very quickly. Many times the mix is referred from the point of view of SKUs and the number of SKUs in a particular category, example 
depends on brands, colors, tastes, sizes is called the depth of the assortment. Now, let us understand what is SKU that is stock keeping unit. The lowest level of detail identifying a product in the retailer's assortment is the stock keeping unit, which identifies a particular item is called SKU. For example, a pair of shirt of a certain brand in a particular style in a particular color, in a particular size and with an option and in a particular price point is one SKU. Now, having understood the product assortment, mix, width, depth and SKUs, let us understand what are various levels of products and services, because many times what a manufacturer thinks about a product and what a consumer would view a product differs. Hence, we have to understand the concept of levels of products. It is important for marketers to think about products and services on three levels that is at a core, at an actual, at an augmented phase and each level contributes to customer value. The most intrinsic level is the core customer value which addresses the question what is customer's real need. When designing products, marketers must define the core, the problem solving benefits or services that consumer seek. A consumer buying diamond buys more than diamonds. D. Beers saw this clearly and said a diamond is forever. At the second level, product planners must turn the core benefit into an actual product. Thus, a diamond includes quality of cut, color, clarity and carrot weight. They need to develop product and service features, design, quality level, a brand name. For example, the D Beers is the brand name of the actual product. Its diamond jewelry innovation in artistry and craftsmanship and other attributes have all been combined carefully to deliver the core customer value of forever diamond. Finally, product planners must build an augmented product around the core benefit and actual product by offering additional consumer services and benefits. Consumers see products as complex bundles of benefits that satisfy their needs. Therefore, when developing products, marketers first must identify the core customer value that customers seek from the product, after which they must then design the actual product and find ways to augment it in order to create this customer value as most satisfying customer experience. For instance, each piece of DBR's jewelry is accompanied by a DBR's 
passport to give consumer ultimate peace of mind in their purchase. The diamond passport confidentially documents every aspect of consumer's purchase including diamond's color, clarity, carat weight, exact cut and measurements. Furthermore, the passport records the jewel's unique dubious mark and metal type. The passport is a counterfeit proof certification that guarantees that DBR's diamond jewelry has been ethically and responsibly sourced and manufactured. There is another theory of Philip Kotler which talks of five levels of product which is given below. Earlier we have seen three levels, now there is an advanced version which talks about the five levels. Let us understand one by one the core product. This is the basic product and the focus is on the purpose for which the product is intended. For example, a warm coat will protect you from the cold and the rain. There is a core for which the product is meant and bought. Now coming to the next level, second level that is generic product. This represents all the qualities of the product. For a warm coat, this is about fit, material, rain repellent ability, high quality fasteners, etc. When we come to the third level, it transcends the core, it is expectations. It is all about all aspects of consumer expects to get when they purchase a product. That coat should be really warm and protect from the weather and the wind and be comfortably be on him when riding a bicycle. The next level is an augmented product. This refers to all additional factors which sets the product apart from that of competition. And this particularly involves brand identity and image and all those which differentiates it from that of the customers. Is that warm coat in style, trendy and made by a well known fashion brand and a designer, but it also factors like service, warranty and good value for money play a major role in this. The last level of the product is potential product. This is about augmentations and transformations that the product may undergo in future. For example, a warm coat that is made of fabric that is as thin as paper and therefore light as a feather that allows rain to automatically slide down. Having understood many levels of product, now is the stage where we have to study a level which is driving and taking the apparel to the next level of business that is luxury product. One of the major category which is contributing significantly to the 
apparel and fashion industry. In fashion, there is a separate levels of products in terms of price, value and customization, which is presented below and the major product among this is luxury product. Let us see the characteristics and how the product management in luxury happens. So, for that let us understand the luxury product and brand. Luxury brands are very distinct and yet even though France, Italy, Germany and UK and USA have created famous luxury brands, there is still some confusion over the concepts of luxury and the luxury brand. Not to mention the French concept griffe, which cannot be adequately be translated into English, but we can equate that on levels of fashion as hat couture. Naturally, everyone is able to sense the differences and to quote a typical example for each of those concepts. However, when pressed for an exact definition, most people hesitate to give a straightforward answer. So, what is luxury? The problem with the word luxury is that it is at once a concept, a subject, a subjective impression and a polemical term often subjected to moral criticism. Thus, what is luxury for some may be ordinary for others. While some brands are qualified as luxury brands by one half of the public opinion, others are simply considered as major or high end brands by the other half. In economic terms, luxury objects are those whose price quality relationship is the highest on the market. By quality, economists mean what they know how to measure, that is the tangible function. Thus, researchers report defines luxury brands as those which have constantly been able to justify a high price that is significantly higher than the price of products with comparable tangible functions. This strictly economic definition of the luxury brand does not include the notion of absolute minimum threshold. What counts indeed is not the absolute price, but the price differential between luxury products and products with comparable functions. This price differential can vary from 10 dollars for a cologne brand or a lipstick to hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
then what does the luxury concept actually encompass? What are the essential attributes of this category of so called luxury items? Now, let us understand the origin of uh, luxury. Lux comes from lux, which means light in Latin. So, the luxury lux part comes from the light. This explains the typical characteristics of so called luxury items. What are all the attributes we can give to light you can give to luxury. That is why luxury glitters. The fact that luxury is visible is also essential and luxury must be seen and felt by the consumer and by others. That is why luxury brands externalize all of their signs, symbols, the brand signature, the luxury must be seen and recognized on the person wearing the brand. And one more characteristic is the luxury must be recognized worldwide. So, many of the brands which are made of luxury raw materials say that it is a luxury brand or what is locally considered as a luxury brand, but it should be acceptable by the worldwide population as a luxury brand. The luxury products are made to perfection and luxury items stand out and embody certain ideals, particularly that of the designers. So, the luxury defines beauty and it is an art applied to functional items. Luxury constantly seeks to escape time constraints by focusing on leisure or by concealing the effects of time with wigs and face makeup. As per perfume, it also helped to distinguish aristocrats from the common folk. As we can see, it is significant that modern luxury brands have failed, have, uh, have falled for the cosmetics and perfume industry not to mention the other essential class attributes, clothing and jewels. Etymology is not the only means of deciphering the mystery of the concept of luxury. Sociology and history, anthropology also can help. Luxury is the natural accompaniment of the ruling class. It is indeed widely acknowledged that luxury plays a classifying role according to which a restricted group bonds together and distances itself from the rest of society in terms of price and 
preferences. Many sociologists also criticize this for separating the population in terms of you know haves and have nots and those who are having luxury products and who do not have the luxury products, but that is a natural phenomena that happens in society. In this respect, luxury brands are just perpetuating and exemplifying the signs and attitudes of the former aristocracy. Not many luxury symbols exist, but those that do represent the past privileges of the European aristocracy, living a life of leisure, free of all working, money, time or space obligations. That is why many of the theorists say that the luxury products are naturally the result of the European culture and society where there is a clear distinction of the class and the classes also tries to exhibit their aristocracy through material possessions. So, everything is made to conceal mere practical utility in luxury, whether it is leather, the polished wood or the hushed engine of cars or multiple details which make them more like a drawing room than a car. In this respect, Ferrari and Porsche are regarded as prestigious sports brands rather than typical examples of luxury. Created by a talented engineer, they certainly convey the mythical quest for speed, but they nonetheless embody above all the basic automobile function that is mobility. Hence, it is not only the perception of the manufacturers, but also the consumers taking that as a luxury product that matters. Now, let us understand how the luxury product has to be managed. For that, we have to understand the principles of luxury product management. The first principle says the necessity of protecting clients from non clients. So, the luxury management has to protect clients from non clients. It can be done by creating a distance, a no mix area or as economists would put it entrance barriers for those who are not invited. So, the luxury products are not for everybody and consciously the marketers have to keep the distance between the clients and non clients. This is implemented through prices and selective and exclusive distribution as well as the aesthetic dimension of the products. But for the distinctive sign to work, it must be known by all. So, the beauty is it must be known by all, but the distance has to be kept between clients and non clients. Thus, paradoxically luxury brands must be desired by all, but consumed only by the happy few. The necessity of protecting clients from non clients 
by creating a distance and a nomics area is a very good strategy that is what separates the luxury product management from other products management. This is implemented through prices and selective and exclusive distribution as well as the aesthetic dimensions of the product. But the distinctive sign to work as we have seen it must be known. So, the luxury products must be known by even a commoner that it is a luxury product and he has to aspire for that. So, the concept of luxury brands must be desired by all, but consumed only by the happy few. The modern luxury brand must belong to those who rule the world today. That means, traditionally there could be many aristocrats, industrialist and rich or royal. But with the new emergence of services sector and various business opportunities, there is a new neo rich class that is also emerging. And even professionals who are equally rich are emerging. So, the luxury products are for them all. Their reference points are no longer land or castle, but mobility. It is true that excessive practicality can harm the luxury product. In that respect, Seiko and Sony are not luxury brands. Conversely, though, if the products are not practical enough, they gradually start to lag and become obsolete. So, the luxury brands cannot just ignore the threat of basic brands, which are strictly focused on practicality. So, by constantly improving the quality of their products, the later are indeed continuously redefining the ever increasing standards of basic quality. However, prestigious and potentially attractive Jaguar may have been, it was doomed by its deficiencies both in its engine and its basic components. By relying too heavily on its symbolic added value, Jaguar actually lost some of its global luxury value and attractiveness. So, unless the luxury products also keep in touch with the latest technology and the trends, it is very difficult to survive. Basic brands are meant to democratize progress. Thanks to a virtually circular mechanism and to competition. Quality standards are rising all the time, even at the cheapest price possible thanks to mass production. Being partly freed from price constraints, luxury brands on the contrary, perpetuate an exceptionally high level of quality. For them, a wide variety of sensations count just as much as wide 
variety of functions. That is why they use the finest materials for their products and extensively customize them in order to prove how customer focused they are. In doing so, they actually condemn mass production as they make service an integral part of their offer. Anything that is considered optional or added on for normal brands is the norm for luxury brands because for them what is extra is ordinary. Luxury brands would be wrong however to think that they are totally safe. Luxury does not always have to be exorbitant. Say for example in the car industry for instance, technological improvements have made production more flexible and thus capable of providing greater scope for customization at no extra cost. Therefore, the customization differential is being jeopardized by the cost differential due to the deliberate differences in the two production processes. Neither the rarity of the object nor the potency of the brand image can alone continue to justify the price differential. As we see, luxury defines the ideal degree of personalization and sublimation of a given object against which the more basic brands can measure themselves. In turn, the later challenge luxury by their continuous technical improvements and very competitive pricing. Luxury watches for example were challenged by quad technology developed for mass market which soon established new standards of precision and reliability and which no mechanical system could possibly meet within the limits of realistic production costs. Both the economic cost of this quality differential and the negative impact on brand image were all the greater as the renown of luxury watch brands had long been associated with lifetime guarantees. Hence, the apparel industry must also understand that mere designer wear or couture or hot couture products does not qualify it to be a luxury brand and make it successful throughout. Unless the products are improvised and made in tune with the societal trends and customer acceptance long term survival of the luxury brands also 
will be in danger. Hence, a separate treatment is given for the luxury product management in this module. There are many luxury apparel brands which are successful because they understood how to manage the luxury product. You have come to the end of this module. In the next module, you will learn about product life cycle, fashion life cycle stages.